And so I want to turn your attention to this subject, loving your enemies. It's so basic to me because it is a part of my basic philosophical and theological orientation, the whole idea of love, the whole philosophy of love. In the fifth chapter of the Gospel as recorded by St. Matthew, we read these very arresting words flowing from the lips of our Lord and Master. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you, that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. Certainly these are great words, words lifted to cosmic proportions. The Greek language comes out with another word for love. It is the word agape. And agape is more than eros. Agape is more than philia. Agape is something of the understanding, creative, redemptive goodwill for all men. It is a love that seeks nothing in return. It is an overflowing love. It's what theologians would call the love of God working in the lives of men. And when you rise to love on this level, you begin to love men not because they are likable, but because God loves them. You look at every man and you love him because you know God loves him, and he might be the worst person you've ever seen. And this is what Jesus means, I think, in this very passage when he says, love your enemy, and it's significant that he does not say, like your enemy. Like is a sentimental something, an affectionate something. There are a lot of people that I find it difficult to like. I don't like what they do to me. I don't like what they say about me and other people. I don't like their attitudes. I don't like some of the things they're doing. I don't like them. But Jesus said, love them. And love is greater than like. Love is understanding, redemptive, goodwill for all men so that you love everybody because God loves them. You refuse to do anything that will defeat an individual because you have a copy in your soul. And here you come to the point that you love the individual who does the evil deed while hating the deed that the person does. This is what Jesus means when he says love your enemy. This is the way to do it. When the opportunity presents itself to you to defeat your enemy. You must not do it. So Jesus says love. Because hate destroys the hater as well as the hated. Now that is the final reason I think that Jesus says love your enemies. It is this. That love has within it a redemptive power. And that is a power there that eventually transforms individuals. That's why Jesus says, love your enemies. Because if you hate your enemies, you have no way to redeem and to transform your enemies. But if you love your enemies, you will discover that at the very root of love is the power of redemption. You just keep loving people and keep loving them, even though they are mistreating you. Here's a person who is a neighbor, and this person is doing something wrong to you, and all of that. Just keep being friendly to that person. Keep loving them. Don't do anything to embarrass them. Just keep loving them. And they can't stand it too long. Oh, they react in many ways in the beginning. They react with bitterness because they are mad because you love them like that. They react with guilt feelings, and sometimes they'll hate you a little more at that transition period. But just keep loving. 
And by the power of your love, they will break down under the load. That's love, you see. It is redemptive. And this is why Jesus says love. There's something about love that builds up. And it's creative. There is something about hate that tears down and is destructive. So love your enemies. And I'm proud to stand here in Dexter this morning and say that that army is still marching. It grew up from a group of 11 or 12 men to more than 700 million today because of the power and influence of the personality of this Christ. He was able to split history into A.D. and B.C. Because of his power, he was able to shake the hinges from the gates of the Roman Empire. And all around the world this morning, we can hear the glad echo of heaven ring. Jesus shall reign wherever some of his successive journeys run. His kingdom spread from shore to shore. The moon shall wane and wax no more. We can hear another chorus singing, All hail the power of Jesus' name. We can hear another chorus singing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We can hear another choir singing, In Christ there is no east or west, In him no north or south. But one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide world. This is the only way. Balance that love is the only creative, redemptive, transforming power in the universe. So this morning, as I look into your eyes and into the eyes of all my brothers in Alabama and all over America and over the world, I say to you, I love you. I would rather die than hate you. And I'm foolish enough to believe that through the power of this love somewhere, men of the most recalcitrant bent will be transformed. And then we will be in God's kingdom. We will be able to matriculate into the university of eternal life because we had the power to love our enemies, to bless those persons that cursed us, to even decide to be good to those persons who hated us, and we even pray for those persons who despitefully used us. Oh God, help us in our lives and in all of our attitudes to work out this controlling force of love and this controlling power that can solve every problem that we confront in all areas. Oh, we talk about politics. We talk about the problems facing our atomic civilization. Granted, all men will come together and discover that at the cross of Christ we will solve these problems. The international problems, the problems of atomic energy, problems of nuclear energy, yes, even the race problem. Let us join together in a great fellowship of love and bow down at the feet of Jesus. Give us this strong determination. In the name and spirit of this Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you.